Okay. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the computer science session. I'm going to give it just a few more seconds to make sure that everyone is, uh, is connected. Okay, so we'll just give it uh, seconds. Okay. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, thank you for joining us today. My name is Dr. Christine Laranto. I'm a professor in the School of Computer Science, and I'm also the Associate Director uh, for Recruitment and Outreach. Joining me today um, are uh, Tucker Wieland, who is from Shopify, and he will be uh, answering questions that you may have about the dev degree, which we also call the um, Industrial Applications Internship. And I'm also joined by Matthew McCray Bovell, who is a student in our program. So Matthew has been around for several years. He's He's been my student a couple of times, as I recall, and uh, he'll be uh, available to answer any questions you have from the student point of view. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, this presentation is about undergraduate studies in the School of Computer Science. Oops, I'm going too fast here, sorry. Okay. So I'm going to start by talking about computer science in general. A lot of people don't have a firm idea of what computer science is before they get uh, into the program. So computer science does include programming, but it's a lot more than just programming. So it's got mainly two parts to it. There's the theoretical part, and then there's the applied part. The theoretical part is also sometimes called algorithms. So what that's all about, it's about coming up with techniques uh, that are based on mathematical foundations. So the techniques for figuring out computational solutions to problems. Computer science is all about problem solving, and we need some approaches and techniques uh, to come up with solutions to those problems. The other part is the applied computer science, which is also known, or more commonly known, as software engineering. So that's the part where we take an algorithm and we actually go ahead and write the software or the code that is associated with those algorithms. So there's a lot of different techniques associated with that for creating software that's reliable, modifiable, and that's basically very correctly uh, written. So there's a lot of ways to write code and we have to make sure that it, it's done properly. So in terms of algorithms, there's a lot of areas where this information or these kinds of techniques are used. So for example, artificial intelligence or AI, deep learning, those require a lot of uh, algorithm background. Computer security, same thing. Lots more fields of expertise are based on algorithms. Um, the highest honor in computer science is called the Turing Award, which is named after the founder of theoretical computer science, Alan Turing. And we have computer scientists in Canada that won this prestigious award as recently as 2018 for their work in deep learning. Software engineering, that includes uh, taking a computational solution and mapping it to the building blocks of a programming language. So writing the code, making sure that the software is tested, that it meets quality, uh, quality criteria. And one example of the very first software engineers was Margaret Hamilton, who worked on the Apollo project in the 1960s. And you can see on the picture on the slide, she has the code that she wrote printed out on paper, and it's basically as tall as she is. So very, very large uh, project. So at Carleton, our computer science program uh, is for four years in duration. It'll take an extra year if you choose the co-op option. So regardless of whether you're in co-op or not, everyone takes the same courses. There are courses on algorithms, software engineering, programming languages, operating systems, databases, web apps, and uh, mathematical foundations of computer science. So there's both the theoretical and the applied, so software engineering. Now, within our program, we also have a number of specialty streams. So 
Everybody takes the same courses, but students who choose to pursue a stream, they take a couple of additional courses in a very specific area that they're interested in. So software engineering is a stream. Now everybody in computer science takes the mandatory software engineering courses, but the students who specialize, who take software engineering as a stream, they take an additional four courses in that discipline. You can also focus on computer and internet security as a stream, where you will have access to additional courses in those areas. There's also game, uh, computer game development, which is very uh, popular. And beginning next fall, we have the AI and machine learning stream. So this is brand new. Um, so you get a chance to get in from the ground up. We also have an industrial applications internship stream, which is also called dev degree. So I'll talk about that in a couple of minutes. Uh, but that's basically a partnership that we have with Shopify, where our student, the students in this stream uh, work part time at Shopify, and they take our courses at the same time, and they're getting credit for the work that they do at Shopify. It's it's a small program, very, uh, it, it's, it's very, it's, dip, well, it's not different very selective as to who they choose, but uh, it's an, ex an excellent experience for the people who are in that stream. Uh, we have a lot of other cool courses, uh, Introduction to Robotics, uh, human computer interaction, foundations of game programming, AI courses, neural network courses, uh, lots of other courses like that. Now I am have to wonder here, so what are the major, so I'm looking at the, at the questions for right now. Uh, what are the major subjects that we would take up during the program? So we'll talk about that in a second. IB, would it be possible for IB students to get university credit in this major? I, I'm not sure what that means. I'm not sure I understand the question. I don't know if that's a question for admissions. How much does the computer science minor differ from the major or honor? So, the minor means that you're basically doing a bachelor's degree in a different discipline and um, you're only taking a few um, you're only taking a few courses in computer science so it's only like eight courses as opposed to many more if you're majoring in computer science the difference between the major and the honor is essentially just um, in uh, the number of courses that you're taking. The honors degree requires a few extra, a couple of extra courses. And um, with the honors, uh, you have the option of, it, it can lead to doing uh, postgraduate studies. So um, a master's afterwards, people who do the major don't have that option. You need an honors bachelor degree to get into uh, graduate school. And, um, yeah, I think that's about it. So is the session recorded? I believe so. Yeah. I don't know how you'll have access to it, but I can answer it. I'll try to find out. How does dev degree work for fi financially for international students? Tucker, did you want to take this one for a second? Sure, I absolutely can. Hi, everybody. Uh, so dev degree uh, financially for international students. So the biggest bulk for international students is that at the moment, you have to reside in either uh, Canada or the United States to participate in the program. So that move would be, with the student would be responsible for it. At that point though, Shopify will cover the full tuition of your degree. And then you will also receive a salary for the time you spend working, which is about half the time that you'll be splitting about 20 hours a week at Shopify, 20 hours a week uh, at Carleton doing your studies and all that uh, work section will be compensated, of course, because you're doing work. Um, so that's how it mixes out. The biggest load for international students is just the relocation, getting into the into the country in the beginning of the program. Great. Thank you, Tucker. That's great. Um, another question is, do you know what the admission average might be for this coming year? Uh, nope, not yet. It was about, I believe it was around 85% or 87% for last year. Um, so it's probably going to be similar for this coming year. And does it matter if you learned online or in person? Not as far as I know, that would be a question for admissions. 
Um, and I think that's it for the questions just for now. So let me go back to the slides and I'll keep an eye on the questions as we keep going. Okay, all right, so what do we have? So computer science at Carleton will definitely help you prepare for your career. So you're going to be learning in the first and second years, you're gonna be learning Python, Java, C and C++, JavaScript, which are the most in-demand languages in the industry right now. So you're learning all the tools that you need to have a successful career in software development. We also have an excellent co-op program. So yes, there's the dev degree and it's a fantastic program and we're so part of it and we're so proud of it. But also if you don't get into the dev degree, there's also the co-op program that uh, you can get into. And uh, that helps you build your network of professional contacts. We are in Ottawa, so we have tons of um, government, we have the federal government, lots of agencies, they all hire our co-op students. We have a huge high tech sector that also, um, that also hires from us. Shopify hires our co-op students as well. So there's lots of opportunities for uh, getting experience in this field for sure. So your first year, how's that going to, um, how's that gonna be organized for you? Well, in the fall, everybody takes the first programming course, Comp 1405, which is Python. There's an optional math course for game development people. Um, in the winter, there's the Java course and the game dev people uh, take their first game development uh, course. The um, internship, the, uh, the the dev degree students, there's some um, internship courses that they, they register for. And in the winter, fall or winter, everybody takes uh, the theory course. So that gets you started on the theoretical uh, computer science portion of things. There's no programming that's required to get into computer science, but if you have no programming experience at all, we do recommend that you consider taking this, um, this course that we have usually taken in the summer before you start first year and it's called Comp Matters. So there's information about that on, on our website. So after first year, uh, you're going to be taking courses that both deepen your knowledge and broaden it, okay? So deepening your knowledge in the areas of algorithms, software engineering, programming languages, computer systems, and widening your knowledge into some of the more advanced areas like graphics, artificial intelligence, networks, security. A lot of those are optional courses that you just take depending on what your personal interests are. Okay. So at this point, a lot of people ask, hmm, why would I choose Carleton instead of another university? Well, a few, a lot of different reasons, actually. Uh, we tend to have very innovative programs. We were the first uh, university in the country to have a co-op program back in the 1980s. We were the first university in Canada to have the game development program as part of computer science. We are keeping up with advances in research and uh, in newer, newer fields. We have this new artificial intelligence stream that's just starting up. We were the first to have the industrial applications internship. The, the partnership with Shopify. Now there's other universities that have that now, but we were the first. Uh, we offer cutting edge research and courses. We have a lot of um, uh, pop, uh, very um, well-known researchers that work in our department. They all do research. If you're interested in doing that, you can work with them maybe on an honors project or something like that. We have researchers in AI, big data, computer, city, uh, computer security, and more. And also, I mean, you cannot beat Ottawa for a location in terms of uh, future employers, uh, co-op employers, the high tech sector, it's huge in Ottawa. And then there's the federal government and uh, our co-op placement is, is extremely high. It's close to 100%. Okay, so that's it for my presentation, actually. Um, I will be more than happy to take some of your questions. If you have questions for me from the academic standpoint, questions for Tucker uh, for about the dev degree, or questions for Matthew, if you want the student's perspective, please go ahead and uh, 
ask your question and we'll be happy to uh, to answer them. Let's see. I'm not sure there's anything in the Q&A that we haven't answered yet. Um, okay, there's a few things in the chat. Um, Carlton is ahead of the game, you bet. Computer science and business, we do have streams. So the list of streams that I showed was not complete. There's other streams as well. There is uh, a stream in uh, business systems as well. And how long would the CS program be for students with CEGEP? Uh, that's a good question. I'm not sure what the transfer credits would be. That would be a good question for, uh, for admissions. Okay, let's see. Question on the Q&A section appear on the top, not the bottom. Oh, really? Oh boy, did I get that wrong? Maybe, maybe I did. Um, okay, hang on. There looks to be a, quite a few questions in there, so you can okay. always go back and upvote questions, and we can sort by the upvoted questions. That so would be start great. With the ones that are the most. Yeah. Okay. Because I'm not. I mean, they most of them show up as unanswered, but I mean, I did answer them. Um. So is there co-op for the AI and machine learning program? So the co-op is specific to computer science in general. There might, there will be some individual postings, job postings, maybe in AI or machine learning, but typically advanced topics like AI and machine learning, you only get into that in third and fourth year. So that would be something that would be focused on very later, much later in the program. And that would be something you would do in graduate school. Okay. Christine, there's a question with six upvotes. It says, what kind of jobs are typically available for those who take computer science? Okay. Hang on. What? Okay. But maybe I'll sort it. There we go. Okay. Um, so typical jobs, um, programming, right? Programming, software engineer. Um, I don't know. You guys have other something to add? Yeah, I would. For, I am not a, a developer, but every single day in my job, every week, I have to write code to do my job. So I would encourage everyone on the call, whether you're considering a full time computer science degree or thinking about it as a, a minor or even taking courses, exposure into some form of computer science is really important in the job market nowadays because so much of the work that we do is dependent on us being able to collaborate remotely, being able to connect with people around the world, and be able to write really intelligent systems that make our jobs easier. So I definitely would encourage, Carleton is an incredible place to do this at. So even if you don't go all in and decide to take a major, it's definitely helpful to take uh, a minor or to pick up some computer science exposure. But the jobs are pretty much endless. You can go into research. You can go into front-end development or back-end development. You can build apps. There are so many different places that are pushing the bounds of what we use computer science for. It's a really solid foundation to build your career on. Tucker, that is such a wonderful answer. Thank you. One of the things that I like to, to think of is we know that there's software in every single thing that we do. So if you're interested in uh, in other areas, I mean, it's always possible once you have a background in computer science, you can just write software for that area, whether it's music or languages or architecture or anything like that. It's just such it really opens a lot of doors. In it that really sense. does. Think about the platform we're currently using. There's a video streaming service. There's chat functions. You're getting info information sent to your email at the same time while you're using the platform. You can see it all over the place. It's touching every piece of, of, the, of the work that we do and how we live our lives. It's an incredible foundation for your career. Oh, there's another one, Christine. The top comment right now says, how difficult is the AI course at Carl Carleton? Right. Well, difficult is a bit of a relative measure. Uh, so 
The AI courses are mostly in third, it starts in third year, which is an introduction to artificial intelligence. And then there's fourth year courses. I mean, by the time you get there, you have all the foundation that you need to get through those courses. I mean, obviously someone coming off the street is not going to walk into a fourth year computer science course and be able to understand anything, right? But I mean, computer science is very much what they call a laddered field. So how well you understand the concepts in first year is going to determine how well you do in second year because all those concepts are built on top of first year. And then in third year, it's all built on top of second year. So it's really important to get those foundations very strong before you move on and build on top of them. So how difficult, it depends how prepared you are for, for those courses. Okay. And the workload, how's the workload throughout the semester? Um, could this be a question for Matthew, potentially? Um, in terms of workload, honestly, I think it's pretty, I think so long as you manage your time well and you start early, it's always very balanced. I think one of the mistakes a lot of people make is um, in the first month of every, it, it, university really ramps up really quickly. You'll, you know, in September, October, have very little to do because, you know, you haven't been assigned anything yet. Usually you're only handing in your first assignments near the end of the first month. Um, and what a lot of people will do is they really won't do that much for the first month or so. But uh, and then in November, it'll really catch up to them and your workload will become overwhelming. So I think as long as you are like making use of your time. And one of the things I like kind of tell people sometimes is, you know, maybe treat it like a full time job if you're doing full time school, like maybe, you know, do not necessarily like nine to five, literally of you know, schoolwork or anything like that, but at least like, you know, do something every day just to keep yourself up to date instead of trying to last minute all your your credits and stuff like that. I think it's very manageable. Like uh, I know people. Um, who who can easily do the five courses and still like you know maybe even work part time on top of that you know what I mean so I think it's fairly manageable relatively speaking. I also think it depends on what your course load is. Like you could definitely take like four really hard computer science courses or whatever. But I think as long as you're you're you know planning ahead and maybe taking like an elective with like maybe three computer science courses, you know like you you work it out. I think it's it's more than manageable relatively speaking. That's a great answer. Thank you, Matthew. Um, another question, how does the honors program work and do we have to apply to it separately? So I believe that in the OUAC OUAC website where you apply um, for Ontario high school graduates, you get the choice of either honors with no stream or honors with each individual streams, whether you're interested in software engineering, game development and so on, or uh, the, the major which is the one where a couple of fewer courses. So that's, it is, so you do apply to the honors program separately from the major and then separately for the different streams as well. Another question, if you chose a specific stream, can you take courses from another stream? So most of the time, the answer is yes. I think the only time where that doesn't work out is there are some courses that are restricted to people from that uh, from that stream. And the one I'm thinking of in particular is game development. I believe that those courses are only for the game dev students and um, it'd be difficult to uh, to take those because the, they want to keep their, their numbers fairly fixed. Okay. I think I answered the one about the kinds of jobs that are available, computer science. Typically, how many applicants are accepted into the Shopify dev degree, Tucker? This one isn't always changing number because the program's working very well. So the number keeps growing. And I can't tell you how many we plan to accept next year because we haven't had the budget approved for it, but it is increased. This year we had 47 students join. Um, so it is a smaller program. I want to, I need to caveat that. You should absolutely still apply. It is a really compelling program. Uh, we found that pairing work with study really magnifies the impact of what you're studying at school. So I think I'll take a second to say, even if it's not dev degree, I'd really encourage you to think about doing some form of co-op. And Carlton has incredible co-op programs, not just with Shopify. I would, of course, love it if you all come and work with me at Shopify. But I would encourage you to, to do that work study portion of it. It is a little bit of a different cadence. It's a little bit of a different workload. But there are things that you learn when you have to sit on a team. And one of the biggest things that we notice is 
that students who join Shopify are joining in, in writing in legacy code bases. They're working on code bases that are millions of lines of code long. That's a lot of stuff that's been written by someone else. And there's a lot of context that you need to learn. And then there's also the function of just working with engineering teams. And that it, being able to do that while you're studying the actual theory behind what you're working on has been really impactful. So there, we normally accept, you know, 45-ish, maybe more next year. I think it's going to be more next year um, into dev degree. We accept hundreds of interns every year. So there's always just normal internships that you can apply for at Shopify. But even if it's not Shopify, I would still encourage you, get that work experience. It will really help you stand out when you go from school into the into job hunting. Having those moments you can point to and projects that you've worked on and those pieces really help as you think about building your career because we don't know what we don't know. And you start to learn some of the things we don't know as we get into the work environment and start to apply the knowledge that we're gaining. And that's, that's a long an, answer, but I'm such really, an awesome answer. <laughs> I really like work study. It made a huge difference for me personally. And if a lot of the engineers I talk to credit uh, being able to work early on in their career and watch senior devs work, really helping them shape up how they decided to go about their career and even sometimes career paths they decided to pursue. That's great. Such a great answer. Uh, next question. Uh, if I did well in grade 12 computer science, how challenging will this program be? Oh, everything's so relative. <laughs> um, one of the great things about doing grade 12 computer science is that at least you know what it entails, right? You know what to expect. Um, sometimes people just go into computer science because they were told to, they're not sure if they like it, or they don't really know what it is. I mean, I know that's what I did when I got into computer science in undergrad, I wasn't really sure what it was. It just happened that I was lucky and it worked out for me. Uh, but not every, it doesn't turn out to be what everybody thinks that it is. So the advantage of taking grade 12 computer science is that, you know, you know what programming is like, you know, you know how to do it. So if you did well in it, then at least, you know, you have an aptitude for this field. So you know that, uh, you know what it, it, it includes and you know that, um, that you're interested in this field. So that's already a huge advantage over a lot of other people for sure. Also, I've noticed, can I just say one thing about this? Yeah. I've noticed multiple people asking about the difficulty level. Um, a word of encouragement to you at this stage in your in your careers, do hard things. It's okay to fail. It's okay to try things and not be as good as you thought you were going to be at them. That's just part of kind of just working through being human. And so I would encourage you, don't worry so much about what how hard it is, but what you can learn from it and how you can even learn from the failure moments makes a big difference. Yeah, I mean, the bigger the risk, the better, bigger the reward, right? I mean, this is a field that is extremely rewarding. Yeah, I mean, it's not easy for sure, but it's about working hard at it. And the more that you master the difficult aspects of this field, the more valuable that makes your skills. It just means that employers are going to pay more for your skills because they were they were difficult to acquire, right? So that's what I tell my students when they feel discouraged. And I just want to reiterate what Tucker said. It is absolutely okay to fail. I mean, even some of the top students that I know, they ended up failing one a course or two at some point. Like there is nothing wrong with that. Just what matters is how you react to that. Are you are you just going to give up and feel like the world is against you? Or are you going to say, geez, I guess I could have done better and then try again and do better and learn from what went wrong the first time. That is such an important thing to learn, not just in school, but in life in general. How do you, you know, get up again after you're knocked down by some life event that, you know, things happen, things go wrong sometimes. That's just how it is. Okay. Ah, uh, yes. What is the difference between computer science and software engineering? And is it easy to transfer programs later on? This is one of my favorite questions. <laughs> so software engineering normally, like in terms of concepts, is part of computer science. So if you remember from the beginning of the presentation, computer science has two parts to it, the theoretical and the applied. 
The applied part is software engineering, and that's how it's been forever. So in the past few years or so, the faculties of engineering at different universities decided to make their own degree in just software engineering. So they focus on that aspect of things, but they don't do the theoretical part, right? The mathematical foundations of computing that we do in computer science. So that's one of the main differences between the two. Um, so another difference in terms of just how the programs themselves are structured in engineering, um, though engi the engineering fields are accredited, which means that they have a professional society that tells them what courses every engineer in Ontario or in Canada has to take. So if you take a program in software engineering, you're going to have to take chemistry. You're going to have to take physics. You're going to have to take a whole bunch of math courses that may not be quite relevant to what you want to do. So in computer science, you take the computer science courses. There are electives as well, like optional um, courses that you get to choose what you take. You can use those electives to do a minor in another discipline that interests you. And um, so that those are two main differences between the two programs. A third one is that in software engineering, in that program, they also do a little bit of hardware. They do a little bit of electronics. So if you're interested in working on circuit boards and that kind of thing, then engineering is probably uh, the better option for you. In computer science, we focus on the software development, the mathematical foundations, and because we focus more on software, well, we're better at it. That's just the way it is. Um, so that's that's I hope that answers the question. How many students get accepted to Carleton in total for this degree? Now that varies by by year. Um, maybe around 500 or so, four to 500, I say every year. Uh, what experience do you need to enter this program? We only look at um, your your high school average and the fact that you've taken math courses in high school. So in terms of experience, we don't expect anyone to have experience in programming. It does help for sure, uh, but it's not absolutely necessary. Does the co-op program start from the first year? And what are the requirements to join it? So no, the co-op program starts after second year. There's just some basics. So the first two years in computer science are basically teaching the very, very basic concepts. Um, it's really hard for employers to really get something out of a student until they, they, they finished second year. So it starts after second year and then you alternate between work term and study term. Um, what was the second part? I've lost the question now. What was the second part of that? Okay. I, the requirements I lost. to join the co-op? Oh, the requirement to join. Thank you. So I think there's a minimum uh, GPA or average that you need in your uh, computer science courses to, um, to, uh, to stay to get into co-op and to stay in co-op. And there's also a couple of second year courses that you need to complete in order to go before you go on your co-op work term. So those are the uh, that was that. Um, the, um, in the main yeah. chat, I put a link to a page that explains like the work study patterns and like what you need the, the CGP requirements in the second year course and stuff like that. Oh, thank you, Matthew. That's awesome. Okay, um, can you do an honor career in two streams? Uh, I think this has come up before and I can't remember what the, I think so. I think you can do two streams. I'm not sure you can. How many, sorry, sorry, my bad, sorry. No, I think you can only be registered to one stream at a time, but you can take courses from the other stream uh, as long as you have the prerequisites. Matthew, did you have something to add? Yeah, so like a really common occurrence is a lot of people will like get admitted with a stream, but then they'll decide they want to change their stream once they like see their friends doing something else. And the other thing that's 
the only streams that actually matter um, right now for like what you guys are thinking is basically game dev or the mobile streams. Those are the only two streams that actually start in the first year. You are is it is very easy so long as you are in honors to transfer your stream at basically any time. It will it can be done within like a day or something. It's not like a huge thing like changing departments or anything like that. Changing your stream is very relatively easy. The other thing you can do is even if you're not necessarily in a stream, um, you technically can do like course override requests to get into those courses but the people who are in that stream get priority in terms of like who is allowed to take that course at any time but i have taken a lot of courses that are not in like i'm not even in a stream but i just override into courses in the other streams at like the um you know when i when i do want to take them or if i do need to i'll change my stream to that stream and then i will take the courses i'd like from that stream then train maybe change my stream later to take the course at another stream the main thing is at the end of the day, the, the stream is what you actually get on your piece of paper. So the actual question of whether you can get two streams on your piece of paper, I've never actually seen someone do it. Um, from what I gather, like I've for the longest time actually seen like the who has graduated. I've never seen someone with two different streams before. But you if you're just going for the actual educational benefit of getting all of the courses under your plate, that's more than possible. Um, especially if you're just in the general honors, all the courses you would have taken in your stream are just considered free electives um so it's really up to you like what you do and don't want to take yeah so just to add to that i'm pretty sure that you cannot be registered to two streams at the same time it's um it's just the way that everything that things are organized in uh in registration well thank you for your answer matthew that's great Another question is, how your, would your co-op program compare to somewhere like Waterloo's? I don't know how theirs is structured, to be honest. I know that I think I think Waterloo's program is mandatory that everybody has to go on co-op. I'm not sure if that's true. Ours is optional. You can either join it or not. Other than that, I don't have enough information about the how Waterloo does things uh, for co-op. I can put in a couple points on that just real quick. Okay, sure. Um, well one of the things is their co-op starts like first year. Um, I think you either have to do your first co-op term either winter or the summer of your first year. But the like the biggest difference that I'm aware of is the way you actually get matched with an employer. Um, so Waterloo, one of the differences between like Waterloo and Carleton is Waterloo has something called a like a match system or a rank system. So the way it works is you interview with a bunch of people and the interviewers, you know, interview a lot of students as well. And the actual companies will rank the students on, you know, who they want. And you will rank the employers that you interviewed with and you don't actually at the end of the day get to pick who you work for you get matched up and then accept your offer based on who you get matched with at carlton um you the the rule is basically that you're allowed to apply to as many as you want but you can only turn down a certain number of employers and the reason why that exists is just to make sure that you know the employers um you know know that students aren't just applying willy-nilly and that you know they're maintaining their professional relationship with the university but at least at carlton you do get like that firm like yes i can pick exactly who I'm working for. Um, it's just that you're only allowed to turn down so many offers. Um, but those are, those are like the main differences from what I'm aware, which I don't know, being able to pick who you actually work for at the end of the day can be like a pretty big, significant difference in my mind. Um, but uh, yeah, if you want, I, I'm not like, I've never gone to Waterloo, but I have friends who went to Waterloo and came to Carleton afterwards. Um, that's what they've told me, but I would do the research yourself if you want like the perfect, like not uh, word of mouth explanation. Well, that makes a lot of sense. Thank you, Matthew. Um, so the next question, Tucker mentioned that we work 20 hours and study 20 hours. Does that mean that we study less at Carleton or the same if we were not to get accepted to the dev degree program? So the Carleton component of whether you're in dev degree or not is identical, right? You need to do all the same computer science courses and meet the same standards as everyone else. The difference with dev degree is that you get, instead of doing uh, electives, you are doing practicums, with it, which is practical experience um, at Shopify. Tucker, did you want to add something to that? Yeah, you may be wondering where that extra time comes from to get it all done. Uh, you don't get a summer break. You work all year round in the dev degree program. Perfect. That makes perfect sense. Um, how easy is it to switch from a specific stream to another or to no stream at all? So I think Matthew addressed this a couple of questions ago. It's fairly easy. 
Um, the only thing that might be a little bit challenging is if you were to transfer into game dev, for example, because the game dev courses start in first year. So if you waited until second or third year to get into game dev, then you would be behind a couple of courses. But that's the only situation where that would be uh, a little bit of a, a challenge. Okay. Um, the other, oh, sorry. The other yeah. thing is, if you're the streams are analogous to being an honors. So if you're in a major, you can't swatch like switch into a stream at any point. You have to actually already be in honors. I think that's another thing not a lot of people realize. So so long as you're in the honors as opposed to the major, you can get into the you can do that stream swap whenever you want. But changing from a major into honors is like a a fairly a more timely process um, and requires a, you know maintain your average and stuff like that. But so long as you're in honors, you can change streams at any point. Right. Okay. Uh, how does the game design major differ from the IMD program? Well, um, in general, the I so this is the inter, what's it called? What's IMD again? This is the multimedia program, yeah. the Bachelor of uh, Information Technology. So regardless of actual game dev and the content like in general computer science is a lot more broad than uh, imd i'm not sure that the same kinds of jobs are available with the imd program it's a bachelor of information technology it's not um it's not computer science uh, their courses are not accepted in our program uh, because we're our, our courses are just more in depth and um, it, it's just a different level of study. So it depends if you want to do a program that's applicable to a lot of different areas of, of computing uh, and computer science gives you those theoretical foundations so that you can go from one area to another or if you want to focus on a very narrow area of multimedia design. Um, so that's that that's your choice, but it's it's quite quite different um, if you do the bachelor of computer science with a stream in game development you're still getting a bachelor of computer science so if later on in your career you want to move on to a different area of computer science you have all the training that you need to do so like that's not the case with the uh, multimedia program it's it's quite different from that uh, standpoint uh, do we have computer science with majors in design? So I'm not sure what you mean by design. Software design is part of um, software engineering and computer science. Uh, multimedia design is something else completely. So I'm not sure that I quite have all the details for that question. Um, are the classes going to be on site or online for the fall of 2022. Nobody knows yet. It depends on how the pandemic is going to go. Carleton University does what the Ottawa Public Health Department tells us to do. So if Ottawa Public Health says that the pandemic is over and we can resume in-person classes, that that's the way it's going to be. But if other variants come up, uh, there's more waves and Ottawa Public Health says that we cannot meet again in person, we have to follow those rules. Um, so we're really, it'll just depend on um, on what the public health situation is at the time. Uh, which streams are offered in first year and which streams are not? So game development is the main one that begins in first year, dev degree starts then as well. Uh, we used to have the mobile computing stream that started in first year, but that the mobile computing stream is going away. So that's no longer an option uh, starting this coming year. So that would be, that's pretty much, that's it for the streams that begin immediately in first year. The other streams are more advanced, software engineering, computer security, AI, those are advanced concepts. You need those first two years of computer science to get you ready to even begin understanding how those fields work. So those courses in those streams begin in third year. So there's some in third year and some in fourth year as well. Um, okay, so I answered the stream one, easy to switch. Uh, I'm from a commerce background. So can I take subjects relating to commerce 
along with mandatory courses that we have to take up. You can absolutely do a minor in business if you choose to. We also have a stream that is business management system. So there's some options there. Okay. I uh, just want to make sure I'm keeping up with the... Okay. Do you need prior experience in specific programming languages? For example, what would happen if you only learn Java and or C++? Would there be a quick intro to Python? So as I mentioned before, we do not expect you to have any programming background before you start. Um, it's an advantage for sure, but it's not mandatory. So all the courses are going to be teaching you concepts and introducing you to languages, assuming that you've not programmed in them before. Okay, so what are all the streams? Uh, maybe somebody can post in the chat a link to the website where that be that is on online. Uh, in my slides, I did post a few examples of our most popular streams, but uh, there's a full list uh, online somewhere. Can you take the cybersecurity courses in a software engineering program? Um, so it depends if you are in the it depends what you mean by the software engineering program if you mean with the faculty of engineering then no i don't think they have access to the computer science courses if you're in computer science with a stream in software engineering then yes you can take the computer science security courses for sure um it's hard to I'm trying to find the top. There's a lot of unanswered questions here that are actually answered. So it's hard to. Can, if we, can I answer one about depth degree that I saw come up? Yeah, I'm, I'm still trying to. Uh, someone asked, Nicholas asked that they heard that previous coding projects helps you get accepted to the program. Uh, it, it doesn't. <laughs> we don't actually look at someone's previous history. We have hired people into the dev degree program who have a lot of technical experience, have big GitHub uh, portfolios in projects that people have used. We also every year hire someone who has never written a line of code in their life. So the projects before is just, yeah, it's great to have some technical uh, literacy before you join the program, but it is not required and it does not give you a leg up on everybody else. Okay, thank you. So the okay, the next question I see is if you were doing an arts degree, can you still do a minor in computer science? Uh, well, right now, the minor in computer science is closed. Nobody gets into the minor in computer science. Uh, we just our enrollment is has skyrocketed and um, we're basically using up all of our professors, all of our resources, just, just teaching our computer science students. So right now, if you're in arts, there's no doing a minor in computer science, but um, in normal times, um, I'm not sure what, I think you may still need to meet the, the math background for admission, uh, but I'd have to look at that. That would be more of an admissions questions. Um, okay. I don't know why these keep, so, if we do a major in computer science and wish to get into graduate school, then do we have to take some additional courses? How does it work? That's a really good question. I'm not sure. If you just do a major, uh, you may have to go back and finish the courses that you did not take in order to get the honors degree so that you can get into graduate school. So it's a, mo it's a more complicated process. Definitely. Um, Okay, so Tucker, a question for you. Uh, when you said that they accepted 45 people last year into dev degree, is that from Carleton only or from multiple universities? That is the cohort size, the last cohort we hired. That was the total. Okay, all right. Uh, and if you complete the dev degree, are you obligated to work for Shopify for a specific amount of time after graduation? Nope. Well, that's easy. <laughs> okay. Uh, will the subject of major interest we picked on the UAC application matter 
when we're picking our stream. Okay, I don't know what subject of major interest means. So it's I'm like not your familiar. Stream. Like that's like What's, just which stream? honor stream it is, yeah. Okay, yeah, you pick your stream. Uh, so what degree is the student going to get if they join the dev degree? Well, it'll be a Bachelor of Computer Science with a stream that's um, uh, the internship option, industrial applications internship. That's what it's going to say on the degree. If you want to apply to both game dev and Shopify dev degree, do you need to apply to both separately in UAC? Yes, I think, Matthew, the different streams show up as different options, right? I think. Yeah, I think they show I think for the, like, uh, Tucker can answer this better, but I'm pretty sure you do a separate application on, like, the Shopify website for the dev degree. But when you actually apply to the UAC system, it'll show you, like, uh, all the, like, the software engineering business, like, the, the however many streams there are is, like, all, like, a drop down or something like that, and you would put yours in. I think that if you were admitted to dev degree, and again, Tucker can say this better than I can, but I'm sure you could, if you, you know, applied to game development, but got into dev degree, I'm sure you could have that changed before you actually begin in, uh, next year, if that makes sense. Yeah, Matthew hit it right on the head that it, we can work that out. Okay. Are the application questions for Shopify dev degree the same every year? Nope. We rewrite the computational thinking questions every year. Uh, and then the personal statement questions do morph every year, but they do ask similar things because we are looking for similar patterns in our applicants. Okay. Uh, can you explain how co-op in the timeline of the five years of study in Carleton? Matthew, did you say you posted a link to that in the chat? Yeah, I can repost it, but um, there's something called like a work study pattern that is sort of recommended by the uh, co-op admissions. Um, I will repost the link. There's like a little tiny table that shows you when you would and what, like when you would do what is referred to like a study term versus a work term. I'll just repost that in the general chat. Okay. Uh, so I thought I answered this a while ago. How much does the computer science minor differ from the major honor? Well, a minor is just a few courses. It's not like what you're actually getting a degree in, the major of the honors is the actual degree. And the minor is closed now for the foreseeable future anyway. Um, so it's being mentioned that your co-op is in the second year. So do you apply to Carlton and then Shopify? So are you to so co-op and dev degree are two separate things that have nothing to do with each other. So co-op starts in second year. Um, and then, yes, you can do co-op work terms at Shopify or apply for them. And then dev degree starts right away in first year. So in both cases, you apply to Carleton. Uh, but if you, if you want to apply to the dev degree, the first requirement is that you have to be accepted uh, in the Car Carleton Bachelor of Computer Science program. And then there's a separate application and um, admission process that uh, you go through with Shopify because they, they, they have their own selection criteria. So you need you need to come at it from both sides there. Okay. I think what that, is um, it? Yeah. Oh, sorry, sorry. I think that in terms of like co-op admission, you're technically not admitted to co-op until you actually maintain your average for the entirety of your first year. Although on the website, there's an option to apply for co-op. Um, as someone who, like, when I was in first year going into second year, you I be, you basically get a separate email from the co-op department, which isn't really, like, co-op is sort of a separate thing within Carleton as opposed to it being part of computer science explicitly because every program has their own co-op option. Um, but you'll get a, an email that basically says whether or not you are even allowed to register for it once you've maintained, like, your average in first year. So even if you don't um, get admitted with it, like, right away through this admissions, you can also, once you're already in first year, you can basically request that you do get added to it in case you didn't already get added to it when you applied. Right. And there's a question here. Are there any dev degree events that have happened or are happening in the near future? Tucker? There sure are. We have recordings on the Dev Degree YouTube channel. I'll add the link to the website and the inbox again to the chat. Uh, we run events every month. So the next one comes up, I want to say three weeks from now. You can register for it at devdegree.ca. Uh, and there's also just lots of information about the program on that website as well. So if you're curious, that's the place to go. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, and what's an example of computational of computational thinking problem? That's a really broad question. 
Uh, I don't know. Is that specific? If that's specifically for the dev degree uh, program? I don't you think will, so. It, that's what we call the, the math problems that students have to submit along with that. Okay. Yes, specifically for the dev degree program. Uh, okay. There will be, the first question is a cipher question. Uh, that's all I'm going to tell you until you apply for the program. Um, <laughs> but it, the things like that, it's their math questions. They, you do not have to write a single line of code to answer those questions, but they are going to test your ability to think, uh, kind of in the direction that we would need to, to succeed in the program. So it's going to be some math questions, uh, and then some things like cipher questions and identifying patterns and things like that. Perfect. Uh, so we, you stated that you accepted 45 students in dev degree last year. How many did you accept into the game dev stream last year from first year students? I don't remember the exact number, but it would be every single student who applied who met the uh, high school average cutoff. So there's no, there's no hard limit on uh, how many we allow into the other streams. Um, just if you, if you get into the Bachelor of Computer Science, and you're interested in uh, game dev, then that's how many go in there. So maybe, I don't know, last year, 100, 120, I don't exactly remember the exact numbers. So uh, another question for you, Tucker, are students, do students get paid when they're in a work term at Shopify? Like, uh, for normal internships? Well, I guess I can answer all those questions. Yes, we pay all of our interns, whether yeah. you're a dev degree intern or if you're, we do, uh, joining us for like a three, six, or eight month internship, all out, uh, internships are fully paid. Okay. Uh, could you recommend any resources for additional studying into computer science? Uh, I don't have anything off the top of my head. I don't one know if either of you has an idea. One of the things that I always is like, just be curious. So if like, right click and hit inspect on websites. Uh, YouTube has unlimited amounts of free resources where people are teaching you different languages or frameworks. All that stuff is available and very free. So I would say find something that you're kind of passionate about or you're curious about and then go do it. It's not actually incredibly difficult to build a duplicate of Twitter. Though It's actually a, a relatively easy setup. And so like you can go find YouTube two videos where someone spends 45 minutes and at the end of it, you have a duplicate of what Twitter does. So I would say just like follow your curiosity, but there are enormous amounts of free resources once you decide that you find something that you're interested in. I know even things like game development in the last couple of years have gotten much more accessible, uh, even if you just want to play around and see what's possible in that space. So I would encourage people, follow your curiosity. There's lots of free stuff out there that can help. Thank you. Uh, what else is coming up here? What does the class hours and schedule of a student look like in this program? Matthew, did you want to take this one? I mean, we, we get to fully book our own schedule. You'll be taking quite a few courses that aren't necessarily in computer science. Um, so it really depends on what you actually schedule or where you schedule your electives and you know how you want to schedule your own time. Like there's courses basically available at any time of the day, and especially with everything being online, a lot of professors have, t have taken to the uh, tactic of like recording their lectures in advance on the weekend and then sort of releasing them on Sunday or something like that. So the truth is, well, while things are online, um, I'm pretty sure it's, it's, I don't know, you can basically do it on your own hours, but um, in person, I mean, most, I found the majority of my courses were in the like 10 to four hours, if I'm honest with you, but I think it, it really depends on what you're taking because I've taken some courses that are at like seven o'clock at night. Um, but again, you you are you're allowed to pick when your courses take place, so that's really up to you. Um, at the end of the day, you're not given a schedule like you are in high school. Okay, I think we're getting close to uh, being out of time, so let's just take um, another one or two questions. D Matthew or Tucker, was there a question in there in the Q and A that you would like to prioritize before we? Uh, so I see our courses in CS this term still online. Yes, they're in, they're online right now. Um, some of these I think we've already answered a little while ago. Um, let's see. 
I think most of these we've answered at some point. I think we're good to, uh, I'm getting the, the thumbs up from backstage over here that maybe we're ready to, uh, to wrap up. Well, I just wanted to say thank you everyone for coming today. Uh, it was great getting all these questions from you guys and talking about our program. We're really excited about it. We have, uh, we have some good profs, we have some great students, and we have this wonderful partnership with Shopify that we're very grateful for. So I wanna uh, thank my, my co-hosts, uh, Tucker and Matthew, thank you for being here. And thank you to all the participants for joining us today. Thank you very much. Thanks everybody.